Hi guys, welcome to the channel, or you know, welcome back to the channel if you're indeed coming back. We're going to continue on with the Ricky Gervais show. Now, uh, yeah, we're going to continue with the Ricky Gervais show, season two, episode seven, nightclub. I got nothing for nightclub. I don't know. I guess Carl goes out. I, I got really nothing. The, the, these these titles could be anything. You know, if it was Carl goes to the nightclub, then we would know what it was about. But it could be anything. Um, so the only way to find out is to watch it, which we're going to do pretty soon. Well, right now, we're just going to remind you, you know, to uh, like the video. If you liked it, subscribe to the channel. Uh, turn on notifications if you like to turn on notifications and you know you can always share the video okay with all that said now we can continue on here with the ricky gervais show season two episode seven nightclubs let's watch for the past few years ricky gervais stephen merchant and carl pilkington have been meeting regularly for a series of pointless conversations this is one of them Testing. Is that all right? <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Ricky Gervais Show with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello. And the little round-headed buffoon that is Carl Pilkington. All right. Carl, as you're aware, you've obviously got many celebrity fans and you've also got a new fan, Warwick Davis, who is the short actor that many people will see in films like uh, Return of the Jedi, he also is in Harry Potter, he's three foot six and Ricky and I worked with him recently and uh, far from asking us about the uh, many celebrity names that we've worked with, the only person he was interested in talking about of course, Mr K Pilkington. He wanted to meet you Carl. Yeah. <laughs> well is he, is he alright to get on with? Was, why wouldn't he be? Um, just because sometimes when people aren't normal it's Was just... It, sorry? No, I just mean when, when someone, like, I've met a few little people in my time. The one that I, I, I met, I met a little fellow once, and he was all right. He got drunk really quick. Uh, but he was all right, but it took me <laughs> by surprise. Only because, like, like I've said about when I met Steve for the first time, it's only that same thing. And then if I lived with the little fellow, I'm sure we'd get on a storm. What do you mean when you met There's Steve? There's a TV show waiting to happen. <laughs> <laughs> Things uh, wear off. That's, yes. that's like the world, isn't it? And it's the same with the little fella you're talking about. First time I see him, it, I'd, I'd be a little bit like, oh, what do you say? Whereas once you get to know him, I'm sure he'd, he'd be a lovely little fella. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where to start, Steve. But Warwick asks, really, um, what are your thoughts on short people, particularly in entertainment? Because, of course, they've, uh, throughout the ages, made an appearance particularly in fiction, Tom Thumb, of course, uh, the Oompa Loompas. What do I think of them? He's just wondering, you know, I suppose, what your take is. Um, they're all right. I mean, when I was on jury duty, every day I'd sort of see one pop in and he'd be sort of struggling getting on the chair. And he'd sort of, you know, he wasn't struggling in a way that he felt uncomfortable. He'd obviously climbed a lot of chairs in his time and this was just another one. And... I'd, watching him, it just makes you makes you think. You go, you know, I should appreciate that I don't have that problem every time I have to sit down and what have you. But I don't, you know, I don't think it's that bad. If I had to pick being really tall or really small, <laughs> I'd go for the really small one because, you know, it's, it, the world's a more interesting place for him, isn't it? Everything's bigger. Do you know what I mean? We go to New York and go, wow, look at this. And they go and they go, oh, yeah. do you know what I mean? Everything's a lot bigger. Everything's more amazing. <laughs> Food portions. Everything's a bonus. So out of the two, I'd be small, and maybe that's what I'd chat to Warwick about for a bit, just to get to know, get to know him. Brilliant. It's a shame in a way that he's not been able to pop in. I'd like to hear that conversation. But I've got, um, you know, speaking of like weird stuff and that, I've got a new. <laughs> well, we uh, weren't, but go on. No, got a new book. Do you know I had that Freaks book, the Top Fifty Freaks? Got a new one sent to me. Really? Uh, yeah, and you know, like everything um, normally has a name. So, like, if it's uh, the two-headed fella, you know, they're all nicknames like that, aren't they? They've well, got two nicknames, I imagine. Uh, but this new book I've got, right, mm. on the cover of this one, it's got like a woman with three breasts, right? And she's called the, the three breasted woman, as you'd expect. <laughs> the one face. Why is she posing nude, though? That's what I want to know. Tart. Well, she looks happy. 
and there was a, a fellow with like one one face but two bodies. In one face but two bodies. <laughs> One face, two bodies. What do you mean so one weird. face, two bodies? <laughs> Surely oh, no. one head, two bodies. Uh, head as well, but it was mainly the face. That was weird because he looked fed up. <laughs> what are you talking about? How can you, you have a face without a head? What do you mean? <laughs> How did it join to the neck? No, it did It did have a, a head, but the fact is it, it was weird that I had one face to me. What do you mean? Well, if you've got one head, had, you'll yeah, have one face. Yeah, I know, but it was just, it was the fact that he had one face and two bodies that I didn't think... But why do you keep saying one face and two bodies as opposed to one head head and two bodies? We're all the man with one face. Yeah, but now I've got one body. Yeah, well, surely he's the man with two bodies then. Again, the description. (laughs) Roll up, roll up, see the man with one face. (laughs) I know, yeah. So it's it's full of stuff like that, right? And what I'm saying is that fellow, you know, the one-faced man, the three-breasted woman... He wouldn't be known as the one-faced man, is what I'm saying. <laughs> well, all, that that all, isn't the peculiar thing about him. Yeah, well, they all had names like that. Right. But there was one thing in it that didn't even have a nickname. It was so weird. <laughs> what do you mean? It, was ju- it just said un- unidentified. What, what does it look like? Um, Sort of... Sort of testicles for eyes. <laughs> <laughs> that's, 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 it just reminded me when you were talking about What do you mean strength. testicles for eyes? <laughs> and what is it? Did he have a normal body? I didn't even look at that. Oh. <laughs> so <laughs> that's what I'm saying though. You're attracted to, to the odd, oddness of the thing. And that's what I was saying about Warren when he walks in. Warwick. Like, you know, it, it, it'll be odd for a minute. And then I'm sure... For him, get, for him it will be, yeah. He'll get used to you. <laughs> I've got my head round it a bit more, and and the way that there's loads of people in the world, mm. and yet you don't see people with like dangly eyes more often. It amazes me. <laughs> I love the fact that he's amazed by not seeing freaks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's incredible. He's walking down the street, going, oh, "Everyone's got one head." That's yeah. weird. Susan, I see any dangly eyes today? <laughs> no, me neither. <laughs> it's weird, isn't it? What's going on in the world? <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Went out the other night with the lads, um, you know, there's a few of us, you know, young, free and single. You Must can... look like the swingers. Oh, it was pretty, it looked like a boy band had gone out. It looked like, really? It looked like, you know, in sync had hit oh, the streets. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. A friend of mine said, let's go to a club. Right, I've been to a nightclub for a long time. I haven't been. Is that because your glasses steam up when you walk in out of the cold? That is a problem in the winter. I genuinely, it's not, it's very difficult to make a good impression. When you, as you walk in, your glasses steam up straight away, and you know you you got to take them off and clean them and stuff, and then you know you get a bit. Dirty. And your wife runs. You pull your wife runs up yeah. through the jeans, yeah. clean them on that, or the back of a girl's dress. <laughs> <laughs> but um, we cruise down to the club. It's one of those big sort of London super clubs, and uh, it's a bit of a queue. I think it's a bit of a chore. But we're queuing up, we're in good spirits, we're looking at it, it sounds pretty funky, we can hear the music coming out. You know, we've been in the queue for quite a while, 20, 25 minutes. Forget it, 25 minutes. Well, yeah, we were pretty excited by this point. The doorman says, uh, hello lads. He said, yeah, we're coming, please. He went, no, you're not. Like, really? What? He said, we're not, you're not coming in. And he just immediately lifted the little rope and sent us away from the queue, right? And we were slightly perplexed, we were, we were dumbfounded. We didn't know what to do, we, we, it was like... This, it, this it couldn't be happening, it didn't make sense. We just que- queued up what was going on. And so, um, my friend said, well, we've got to find out why he's not going to let us in. So he goes yeah. back over. I thought you wanted to do, you wanted to tie him up with logic. That'll show a bouncer. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah, show him how educated you are and how you can win an argument and make him look stupid. You'll be in that club in no time. <laughs> That's what they appreciate. <laughs> they love that. Because what they respect is being made to look like a fool. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we went over and... Uh, <laughs> they really look up to intellectuals. <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> so one of our mates goes over and he says, uh, why didn't you let us in? And he went, because you didn't have any girls with you. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I'll tell you this. <laughs> that's kicking you when you're down. <laughs> because when you're out on a Saturday night trying to get into a club to meet women, and the reason you're not allowed to go in a club to meet women is because you haven't got any women with you, that's just salt in the wound. It's so humiliating. So, um, a friend of mine says that there's a VIP entrance over there. And there was like a woman with a clipboard, you know, the guest list. Uh, separate entrance. She said, you know, you've got a little bit of profile, Steve. Why don't we try and use your... You ran out and got your golden globe in your Emmy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, I always uh, I always carry, uh, you know, some of my cuttings with me. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, 
and it, so and I felt a bit self-conscious about it. I was thinking, I'm not into this, you know, it's a bit awkward. But he said, look, don't worry, you just stand here. Just stand here, just like you're having a conversation. I'll go over, I'll say, I'll point them out, I'll go, oh, there's you know, Steve Merchant over there, at the office. Oh, God, Steve! So I thought, well, you know, well, the thing is, we were out, and I was, I was a bit frustrated, and I thought, you know, uh, we may as well try everything. So, um, so I stand there, and my friend goes over, and he has a word, and he comes back, and he says, uh, it's fine. She's, she can't let us in the VIP entrance because she's not allowed, but what she can do is walk us to the front of the queue, right? And walk in front of the queue and explain. So I think, okay, fine. Oh, God. So oh. we walk past everyone else, right, to the front of the queue, right? She goes up to the guy. She says, uh, this is Steve Merchant, office. The guy goes, I know he is. We're not letting him in. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> but now, of course, some people have recognised me. So they're having, trying to have my photo taken. So there's people <laughs> inside the uh, line that's being allowed in the club. I've got to lean across the rope to have my photo taken with them, even though I'm not allowed in the club. So they go, oh, all right, this is Steve. They're having the photos taken, right? Camera phones and that. They're going into the club where the music, the party's kicking off. I'm outside waiting for the next chump who wants to have his photo taken. I mean, it was mental. <laughs> so, um... That's unbelievable. I was furious. And then one guy, I remember he was, he was chatting, and he, he goes, oh, yeah, brilliant. I love the podcast and all that stuff. I love Carl. Is Carl with you? I said, oh, Carl's not out here. And his girlfriend, she went, who's that? And he went, oh, it's just Steve Merchant, he does the office, he does the thing. And she went, who, who cares? Who are you, Bruce Forsyth? And it's that thing when suddenly I'm being humiliated and embarrassed <laughs> by someone's girlfriend. I never asked for that. I never asked for her opinion on me. I'm sorry if I don't impress you, if I'm not sufficiently famous for you. But it's not my fault. It's your girlfriend who brought it up. It was like I'd gone over to her and tried to show off, and she was annoyed. I was, so by now, I was just furious. Oh, so God. I thought, forget this. Well, I was walking down the street, and there's a, a group of... Um, Builders <laughs> sitting down having a cup of tea. One of them goes, "All right, Rick." I went, "All right, mate." The other one went, "Not as fat as on telly." <laughs> I went, "Oh, thanks." Not as fat as on telly. So he went with, "Well, you are fat, but you look even fatter on telly." He didn't say, "Oh God, you don't look fat at all," or, "Oh, you look, you, you look, you look big on telly, but you don't look." Fat. Just went with, "Not as fat as on telly." And there's nothing I can say. But cheers, mate. Now, when you said cheers, mate, cause you, did you say that because you were... Because I'd say cheers, mate, because I'd be a little bit scared of them. No, I was I'd be worried about like sarcasm and, you know, I laughed or I laughed or... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, you can get away with sarcasm <laughs> with working-class blokes. I'm I a little could, bit more secure with a working-class man. I was talking are, to I'm Carl. Them. I feel like they're going to turn on me at any minute. You don't feel confident sort of backing in a lorry driver? Terrified. All oh, right. Because okay. if I did... He'd, le he'd probably lean out and just go, go and get your dad, mate. Yeah, not you. <laughs> Fuck off, I'm not <laughs> Not you. Yeah. <laughs> that jingle there signifying, of course, once again, another reading from the diary of Carl Pilkington. Now, of course, for those of you who have not been keeping abreast of Carl's medical complaints, um, just bring us up to speed, Carl. You had to go into hospital because previously you'd had I've been treatment. in and out, honestly. I've been yeah. in and out of that hospital just with uh, kidney problems, um, really painful and what have you. And, uh, yeah, he had so kidney I've, stones, all right? No, no, but seriously... I had a bit of a lion today because I have to get up early for my operation tomorrow. Not only have I got to have tubes shoved up my knob, but I also have to get up at 5.50. <laughs> Suzanne said I could have what I want for my last dinner. It's not your last dinner, you're going for an operation. Yeah, but you, you can't take things for granted these days. Oh, for... I had shepherd's pie and peas. Suzanne made it from scratch. As nice as it was, it was annoying. Because making stuff from scratch means loads of pots, and it's my job to do the washing up. <laughs> so much as the food was nice, there was loads of pans and that. People who get their last dinner on death row don't have to wash up. <laughs> Got up at 5.55. You were supposed to be getting up at 5.50 on the other page. You were yeah. five minutes late getting up. He's often late. Often late. Got to the hospital and had to wait in the waiting room. There was another nine people in there waiting to be sorted. I got called in. They sat me on a bed and took all my details down. Five minutes later, I'd been knocked out. I got woke up when they were ripping a pipe out of my throat. I felt more rough this time. The doctor came to see me and said he couldn't find a stone, so I must have passed it. I said, are you sure? He said, yeah, we filled your kidney with water and expanded it, and there was no hiding place. I sat in the recovery room for an hour while they found me a bed. One of the fellows who was sat in the room with me this morning got wheeled in. They couldn't wake him up. All the nurses were laughing because he didn't want to wake up. I bet they were laughing at me when I was in the theatre. Someone told me they totally strip you when they're operating. 
I would have looked like the alien on the Boswell incident. <laughs> Boswell! Boswell! <laughs> it's quite a nice analogy if it weren't for the fact that you said Boswell. <laughs> it's... it's the Roswell incident. Didn't sleep much through the night because there was a 60-year-old fella shouting at the nurse about his pillows. I don't think I slept through a full hour with one thing or another going on. My bed was next to the toilet, so I kept hearing the flush. How do they sleep in hospitals, though? They wake you up to give you fucking sleeping pills and things, don't they? <laughs> How do you sleep in there? I don't, I don't know what it is. There's no air. There's, there was an old fella across from me who kept breaking wind. He didn't even try and cover it. <laughs> <laughs> it was just of that age where he didn't care. Just like, that's what I do. I'm in a hospital, leave me alone. <laughs> what do you mean? Just, I, I don't know what was wrong with him. He's, uh... I talked to him because at first I felt sorry for him. I was a little bit like, you know, he's, he's had no visitors, uh, no one's calling him up, so I'll talk to him. But then he got that familiar with me that he'd just be doing it whilst I'm chatting to him. Just like he's my granddad or something. It's just like, oh, that's what he does. <laughs> Stop lying in as well. Stop doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, unbelievable. He didn't even try and cover it with a cough. It was just like, that's... <laughs> <laughs> Just non-stop. Got home and sat down. My pains are coming back, but the doctor said this would happen and that my insides are still in shock, so I need to take it easy. It's nine o'clock. I'm in agony. I can't do the diary for the rest of the day. Jesus. So you may as well just tell us then what happened. Suzanne just got frustrated with me because I was rolling about on the floor and she was trying to watch Arthur, right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> that was on the other night. Uh, Arthur and, was uh, with your lodger. So, um, and she said, look, if you're in pain, do something. She said, you know... You went I, and got a cold plate. Yeah. No, use an ashtray. Plates are for liver damage. <laughs> Got in a taxi. Um, he filled up on the way, which was annoying. <laughs> he did it. <laughs> he did. Cheeky. That, that really, I mean, he could on the way to the pain. hospital. So because uh, he's not an ambulance driver. So anyway, he gets us there and he doesn't charge us, which is pretty decent. Oh, that's alright. Yeah. So this this gay fella came through. And, How did you know he was gay? Um, just the way he was. I'm not having a go. He was a, he was a good fella. Do you know what I mean? A he doctor, you mean? No, he was like a, he was a nurse. Right. And he, he came through and just sort of went, oh, how are you? And I was like, oh, I've <laughs> better days. So he, he got As me you mentioned in the diary, I remember the first time when I came here, they said the nurse might put a tablet up my arse. I thought the chances of that happening had just increased. <laughs> oh, God! Yeah, but I, I would have let him do it, honestly. <laughs> I was that sort of out of it. That... Of course you'd let him do it. He's a qualified nurse. No, but the way I am now, say if it was just a tablet for sorting out my blood pressure... Mm. And I walked in there and he went, oh, hello. And he said, yeah, let's pop that. I'd go, hang on a minute. <laughs> <laughs> but what I mean is that night, I, w I would have just let him put three up, honestly. <laughs> it's just weird, isn't it, how your body just goes, let him get on with it, and you let you trust anyone, don't you, when when you're in that much pain and you need And a they're a qualified nurse, yes. Mm. Carl, of course, has written a poem about the experience entitled My Ward. All I've done here, I've been through a... You know, uh, I don't know what the word is. A, a bad experience. Trauma. A trauma, yeah. I've been through a load of trauma. Mm. So I'm just finishing it off with a little sort of picture for people. <laughs> Go on then. Me, a Chinese fella and an old bloke who looked like Mr Burns from The Simpsons. Don't know what was wrong with him, but breaking wind was the symptoms. No one visited him or called him. He seemed quite lost to me. As well as wind problems, he had a colostomy. <laughs> when I left, I said, see you to the old man. Turned out the other fella wasn't Chinese. He was from Japan. <laughs> <laughs> I never found out what was up with him. <laughs> You've got a little picture there, haven't you, of me sat in my ward. I'm sat there with that fella who I didn't talk to, the old fella who had wind problems. And that's what a poem is, isn't it? But the detail about you thought he was Chinese and he turned out to be Japanese, how is that evocative? That's just a piece of misinformation. It's just I like, like it. I imagine a lot of people make. I like same it because you know why? It's like he even makes digressions within his poem. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's like he could have gone back and erased that, but he didn't. He left. He left that digression in, and I think that's that's great. To be honest, I had a late night last night because I stayed up to watch a program about monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> it's already good. Of course he did. It's all. Good. Now, before I read on, I mean, is this not some kind of monkey news? Is this not a late return to monkey news? Uh, well, it's not. It's not that good. Is it not? Whereas the other monkey news is... Oh, chimpanzee, <laughs> that's more shit! That's what he says. It, this is what he gleaned from the programme about monkeys. It sat on a bridge and wanted stuff off people to walk over the bridge. 
What? So it was acting as some kind of toll booth. This was is it? ridiculous. No, it was a bridge in in like the jungle. Oh, shut the fuck up! And it's a monkey <laughs> that sat on a bridge, and um, a lot of tourists go through the area. No, it's to, a monkey who realised that that if he sits there, it gets stuff because it looked like it's a cute little chimp begging. No, but every time. Yeah, because mm. you give a monkey, you give it. To, oh, I'm as bad as him now. If you give a chimpanzee uh, a banana. Uh, and he starts realising that humans have things to give. Yeah, but it's all Squirrels sorts learn that. If you don't go, oh, you wouldn't say, oh, went to the park, the squirrel's waiting at the gate. You have, you have to give him a toll to go in. They don't do anything to give him nuts. They come up to you every time. You, you fucking idiot. Went to bed after watching it and fell asleep thinking about it on the bridge right now. It's a bit bad, really, because the monkey should work harder for its food. It made me remember the slug I saw yesterday that was eating bird poo. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody would ever help a slug with food like they do with ducks and monkeys. A slug's life is pretty bad. The only time they come out of their den is when it's raining. Den. So, so even their days out are depressing. <laughs> is, do you know what I mean? No. It is like, it's a horrible thing to be, in it? <laughs> a slug. <laughs> Talking about what is it like to be a slug? No, just because like the monkey, even though it's been quite aggressive, everyone was like, "Oh, give it some water." And it was it was well like kitted out. It had like you know chocolate bars, bottled water, some like you know fizzy stuff, and all that. An iPod. It was listening to monkey news. It could have had one if it wanted one. It was getting away with murder on that bridge, and that's just because it was furry. Yeah, if that was like a blob, like a slug, there's no way people would be that friendly towards it. And it just annoys me how you get this pecking order. <laughs> For like, no matter what creature you are, favouritism. And that slug was only eating that bird poo because it wasn't being offered stuff. If it was offered toffees or whatever. <laughs> well, it's just sad, isn't it? It's, it's come to that. That's what its life has come to. <laughs> yeah, it's not. It's it's down on its fucking yeah, life. It didn't live in a big country house no, and his wife left it, the kids went and started hitting the ball. And I kind of thought, and look, they do only come out in the rain and it's depressing and it'll probably get killed in a bit. And that was its last meal. I just... Last <laughs> meal! People but it wouldn't don't prefer care. steak and chips, Carl. It no, doesn't a leaf. have... It must like a leaf or a... a you know, at the end of the day, it's an insect. They love it. It's not an insect! Well, it's part of that gang. It's part of that... <laughs> no, it's part it's of that... They hang out together. They it's hang out not. together. No, Why do you think it's part of that because gang? Because it, it knocks about in the woods in the same place as a spider does. But all I'm, uh, what I'm saying is they, they're eating boring stuff because that is what's <laughs> in It's not their boring area. stuff to them. They're not, I have no opinion of it at all. They take in sustenance. No, but where you are is what you eat. When I'm in London, I'll have beans on toast for lunch. On holiday, what? Tapas, go on, I'll have a bit. <laughs> so it's whatever you eat what's in that area. Suzanne went off to work and I went to the shop to buy some envelopes. The shop was empty, but the fellow behind the counter was on the phone and just kept talking, even though he could see I was waiting. I started to count backwards from 20. <laughs> when I got to six, he hung up and served me. I won't use the shop again. Question, why count backwards from 20? So he's thinking, what's going to happen at one? If I start counting from one, he's going, well, let him carry on. What, out loud? So, not, not really loud, but, like, uh, more of a mouth action, so he could see who was doing it. You know, like Sorry, <laughs> you you just started miming <laughs> counting backwards to a man in a shop. He's on the phone. The yes. shop is empty. Yes. I thought he'd like me custom. He could have served me and stay on the phone. Even though I don't like that, at least he's still doing what what you know he needs to do. I just said, sorry, can I just get these, please? Yeah. Well, I stood there and I thought it's annoying me now. My kidneys ach aching and I started to get a bit of a sweat on. So I thought, right, I'm going to give him twenty seconds, and if he hasn't got off the phone, I'm leaving. Get, you are one yourself... of the strangest people. It's just giving yourself a, a thing. I could have been stood there for free. ages. He's one of the strangest people <laughs> who's free to walk <laughs> yeah. it's the about, streets. No, I set myself a little target and I thought, I don't want to waste another 30 seconds in here. I'll give him 20. It worked. He served me at six. But it didn't work. Yeah, but did he do it because you were doing that or did he finish his phone call? <laughs> I don't know. I was busy counting. <laughs> 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 All right. All right. So that was uh, the Ricky Gervais show, season two, episode seven, nightclub. That was a funny story. <laughs> getting in a nightclub. When the guy, oh yeah, I know who he is. He ain't getting in. <laughs> that was funny. And Carl, Carl's still having problems there with his kidneys and that. I guess why? Well, I guess he does get better because you know. 
a lot of stuff after this show with Carl in it. Thanks for watching. I uh, hope you liked the video. Hope you're going to subscribe to the channel. And well, I hope you have a nice day. Thanks for watching.